Welcome to the chapter on immunologic emergencies. After you complete this chapter in related coursework, you will understand the anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology of hypersensitivity disorders and anaphylactic reactions. Additionally, you will have the knowledge and skills to recognize and manage hypersensitivity disorders and anaphylaxis. Regarding the EMS National Standard Competencies regarding medicine, an EMT will apply fundamental knowledge to provide basic emergency care and transport based on assessment findings for a patient who is acutely ill. Specific to immunology, you will recognize and manage shock and difficulty breathing related to anaphylactic reactions and have an understanding of the anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, assessment and management of hypersensitivity disorders and emergencies as well as anaphylaxis. At least 1,000 Americans per year die of allergic reactions. Allergy-related emergencies may involve acute airway obstruction and cardiovascular collapse, and you must be able to treat these life-threatening complications. You must also be able to distinguish between the body's, unusual, or body's usual response to an allergen and an allergic reaction. This chapter talks about immunology, which is the study of the body's immune system and the five categories of stimuli that may provoke an allergic reaction. The immune system protects the body from foreign substances and organisms. When a foreign substance invades the body, the body goes on alert and it initiates a series of responses to inactivate the intruder. An allergic reaction is an exaggerated immune response to any substance. It is not caused directly by an outside stimulus such as a bite or sting. Rather, it is caused by the body's immune system which releases chemicals to combat the stimulus. The chemicals include histamines and leukotrienes, both of which contribute to the allergic reaction. And the allergic reaction can be mild and local, which involves hives, itching, and tenderness. Or it can be severe and systemic, which may result in shock and respiratory failure. Anaphylaxis is an extreme life-threatening allergic reaction. It involves multiple organ systems, and wheezing is one of the most common signs. Wheezing is a high-pitched whistling breath sound that is typically heard on expiration. It results from bronchiospasm and bronchioconstriction and increased mucus production. Urticaria or hives may also be present, and this consists of small areas of generalized itching or burning that appear as multiple small raised areas of the skin. You may also note hypotension as a result of hypovolemic shock due to increased capillary permeability. The most common allergens fall into five categories, insect bites and stings. When an insect bites and injects the bite with its venom, this is called envenomation, or more commonly a sting. The reaction can be local, causing swelling and itchiness in the surrounding tissue, or it may be systemic, involving the entire body, and that's called anaphylaxis. And let's watch this animation again. And it can happen that fast. Penicillin injection may cause an immediate and severe allergic reaction and oftentimes occurs within 30 minutes. Oral penicillin may take longer but causes an equally severe reaction. A person will typically experience an allergic reaction after becoming sensitized by the first exposure. Plants. Dusts, pollens, and other plant materials can cause a rapid and severe allergic reaction. Food. The reaction can be relatively slow more than 30 minutes and some examples include shellfish and nuts. And chemicals, the examples are makeup, soap, and latex. Death from stinging insects far outnumber deaths from snake bites. The stinging organ of most insects is a small hollow spine projecting from the abdomen and venom can be injected through this spine directly into the skin. Honeybees cannot withdraw their stinger. The honeybee flies away and dies. The implanted stinger remains and keeps delivering toxin. Because they fly away, it is difficult to identify which species is responsible. Wasps, hornets, and fire ants can sting multiple times. They do not die after stinging. 
Some ants, especially the fire ant, also strikes repeatedly, often injecting a particularly irritating toxin at the bite signs. Signs and symptoms include sudden pain, swelling, localized heat, redness in light-skinned individuals, itching and possibly a wheel, which is a raised, swollen, well-defined area on the skin. You can see that on your left. There is no specific treatment for these injuries, although applying ice sometimes makes them less irritating. The swelling associated with an insect bite may be dramatic and sometimes frightening, and these local manif manifestations generally are not serious. The stinger of the honeybee can continue to inject venom for up to 20 minutes after the bee has flown away. Gently attempt to remove the stinger and attached muscle by scraping the skin with the edge of a sharp, stiff object such as a credit card or driver's license. Do not use tweezers or forceps because squeezing may cause the stinger to inject still more venom into the wound. Gently wash the area with soap and water or a mild antiseptic and try to remove any jewelry from the area before swelling begins. Position the injection site slightly below the level of the heart and apply ice or cold packs to the area. Be alert for vomiting or any signs of shock or allergic reaction. Do not give the patient anything by mouth and place them in the shock position and give oxygen if needed. Monitor their vital signs and be prepared to provide further support as needed. About 5% of people may have anaphylactic reactions from bees, hornets, and yellow jackets, as well as wasps. This type of allergy accounts for about 200 deaths a year and can cause anaphylaxis. This is an example of how this process works. So the sting happens and there are released chemical mediators and specific antibodies that rush to the site and they cause bronchial spasm and vasoconstriction in the lungs. The heart decreases its cardiac output as well as decreased coronary flow. The blood vessels dilate and leak and the skin develops pruritus, urticaria, and edema. Patients may experience generalized itching and burning, widespread urticaria, wheels, swelling of the lips and tongue, bronchiospasm and wheezing, chest tightness and coughing, and dyspnea, as well as anxiety, abdominal cramps, hypotension, and occasionally respiratory failure. If untreated, an anaphylactic reaction can proceed rapidly to death. More than two-thirds of the patients who die of anaphylaxis do so within the first 30 minutes, so speed on your part is essential. Patient assessment. Scene size up. First of all, we need to make sure the scene is safe. We should identify and address environmental hazards. The patient's environment or activity may indicate the source of the allergic reaction. Did they receive a sting or bite from an insect? Is it a food allergy at a restaurant or is it a new medication that they're taking? A respiratory problem reported by dispatch may be an allergic reaction. If many people are affected, however, it could be an inhaled poison or a terrorist event. Never enter a scene where more than one person is experiencing the same symptoms with a similar onset. Follow standard precautions with a minimum of gloves and eye protection and consider the need for additional or specialized resources. Call for additional resources early rather than late. Check your mechanism of injury or nature of illness. This may not be an allergic reaction. Trauma may have occurred because of a medical incident. Determine MOI or NOI and look for bee stingers or contact with chemicals or other indications of a reaction. Perform a rapid scan of the patient to identify and treat any immediate or potential life threats. Form a general impression. Remember that allergic reactions may present as respiratory or as cardiovascular distress in the form of shock. Patients experiencing a severe allergic reaction will often be very anxious and feel like they are going to die. You should call for advanced life support backup if available. Some patients will be wearing a medical identification tag. You should try to get information on the chief complaint from a conscious patient. If the patient is unresponsive or has a decreased level of consciousness, immediately evaluate and treat the airway, breathing, and circulation. Airway and breathing. Anaphylaxis can cause rapid swelling of the upper airway. You may have only a few minutes to assess the airway and provide life-saving measures. Not all allergic reactions are anaphylaxis. You should work quickly to assess your patient to determine how severe their symptoms are. We'll watch this animation again and I'll show you how quickly the airway tissues can swell.
Position the conscious patient in a tripod position and listen to the lungs on each side of the chest. If wheezing or a silent chest is encountered, the lower airways are also closing. Do not hesitate to initiate high-flow oxygen therapy, and in severe situations, the definitive care needed is an injection of epinephrine. If necessary, be prepared to use standard airway procedures and positive pressure ventilation. Some patients in anaphylaxis may not prevent, present with severe respiratory symptoms, but primarily with signs and symptoms of circulatory distress, such as hypotension. Palpate for a radial pulse. If the patient is unresponsive and without a pulse, begin BLS measures or use an AED. If the patient has a pulse, assess for a rapid pulse, pale, cool, cyanotic, or red moist skin, and delayed cap refill times that indicate hypoperfusion. Your initial treatment for shock should include oxygen, positioning, maintenance of body temperature, and definitive treatment for anaphylaxis is epinephrine. Make your transport decision. Always provide prompt transport for any patient who may be having an allergic reaction and take along all medications and auto, injections, auto injectors the patient has at the time. Make your transport decision based on findings in your primary assessment. History taking. Identify the chief complaint or history of the present illness, associated signs and symptoms, and pertinent negatives. As you can see here, common signs and symptoms of allergic reaction include respiratory, cardiovascular, skin, and other findings. This is a great study guide. If the patient is conscious, ask him or her the following questions specific to allergic reactions. Have you already completed any interventions? Do you have any prescribed preloaded medications for allergic reactions? Do you have any respiratory symptoms? Do you have other symptoms such as itching, rash, hives, pallor, or bite, or sting marks, or have you experienced any confusion? Have you had previous allergic reactions, asthma, or hospitalizations? What were you doing or what were you exposed to before the onset of the symptoms? Physical exam. The secondary assessment should include a systematic head-to-toe or focused assessment to determine hidden trauma or other unrelated problems. Thoroughly assess breathing, including work of breathing, accessory muscle use, head bobbing, tripoding, nostril flaring, or grunting. Auscultate both the trachea and the chest. Wheezing occurs because of narrowing of the air passages, which is mainly the result of contraction of muscles around the bronchioles in reaction to the allergen. Exhalation gets more difficult, and breathing rapidly becomes more difficult, and the patient may even stop. Prolonged respiratory difficulty can cause a rapid heartbeat, shock, and even death. Strider, a harsh, high-pitched inspiratory sound, occurs when swelling in the upper airway closes off the airway, and the swelling can eventually lead to total obstruction. Assess the circulatory system. The presence of hypoperfusion or respiratory distress indicates that the patient is having a severe enough allergic reaction that it can lead to death. Assess the skin for swelling, rash, hives, or signs of the source of the reaction like bites, stings, or contact marks. A rapidly spreading rash or red hot skin may indicate the sign of a systemic reaction. Red hot skin may also indicate systemic reactions. If the reaction continues, the body will have difficulty supplying blood and oxygen to the organs, and one of the first signs of this will be altered mentation. Get your vital signs. Assess baseline vitals, including pulse, respirations, blood pressure, skin, pupils, and oxygen saturation. Rapid respiratory rate indicates potential obstruction. Rapid rate of respiration and pulse may indicate respiratory distress or systemic shock. Fast pulses and hypotension are ominous signs, and they indicate systemic vascular collapse and shock. The use of monitoring devices are important because if a patient is experiencing an allergic reaction, pulse oximetry can be useful that you can assess perfusion. Reassessment. Repeat the primary assessment and reassess vital signs. The patient experiencing a suspected allergic reaction should be monitored with vigilance because deterioration of their condition can be rapid and fatal. Special attention should be given to any signs of airway compromise. Monitor the patient's anxiety level and watch for signs of shock. You must first identify how much distress the patient is in. Epinephrine and ventilatory support are required for severe reactions. Milder reactions may only require supportive care like oxygen. In either case, your patient should be transported to a medical facility for further evaluation. Recheck your interventions. You may need to give more than one injection of epi because it does have a short half-life. And be sure to consult medical control first. Communication and documentation. 
When to contact medical control depends on your assessment findings and the urgency of care required by your patient. Your documentation should include signs and symptoms found during your assessment, reasons for choosing to provide the care you did, and the patient's response to your treatment. If the patient appears to be having a severe allergic or anaphylactic reaction, administer BLS at once, including high flow, high concentration oxygen. Provide prompt transport to the hospital. Reassess vital signs every five minutes for your unstable patient or 15 for a stable patient. Place shock patients in the appropriate position. Request ALS backup if you work in a tiered response system and be prepared to maintain the airway or administer CPR. If a stinger is present, scrape it away with a hard object like a credit card and do not use tweezers to remove it. Apply ice, as this may help reduce swelling, but do not apply it directly to the skin. In some areas, you may be allowed to administer epinephrine or assist the patient with their own epi administration. Epinephrine is a sympathomimetic and it mimics the sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight response. It has various properties that cause the blood vessels to constrict, which reverses vasodilation and hypotension. Other properties of epinephrine include increased cardiac contractility and relieve bronchiospasm in the lungs. It can rapidly reverse the effects of anaphylaxis. The indications include a severe allergic reaction or hypersensitivity to an exposed substance. Remember that your EMS service may or may not allow you to assist the patient in the administration of epi and call medical control. All allergic emergency kits should contain a prepared auto-injectable syringe of epinephrine. You see an example here. If the patient is known to have an allergy, he or she may carry a kit. Some patients who suffer asthma attacks or have severe allergies to insect stings need to be injected with epinephrine as soon as possible. Use appropriate body substance isolation precautions prior to beginning patient care. Are you allergic to anything? Uh, yeah, I'm allergic. Epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, is the body's main hormone. Epinephrine is used to increase a person's heart rate and blood pressure as well as to ease breathing problems caused by allergic reactions and asthma attacks. Patients susceptible to allergic reactions from insect stains often carry epinephrine auto-injectors. Inspect the medication label for the correct name and appropriate concentration. Your partner could be checking the patient's pulse while you're preparing to cleanse the injection site. Choose an injection site of the large muscle of the thigh. If time permits, cleanse the injection site to kill microbial agents that live on the patient's skin. In severe cases of anaphylaxis, it is acceptable to inject the epinephrine through the patient's pants. Place the black tip, the narrow end of the auto-injector, against the intended injection site. Push firmly and quickly until the needle is released and injects the medication into the patient. Remember, the needle sticking from the black end of the auto-injector is contaminated. Dispose of the auto-injector by inserting the entire device into a puncture-resistant sharps container. Needle first. The adult EpiPen and Twinject systems deliver 0.3 milligrams of Epi via an automatic needle and syringe system. The infant child system delivers 0.15 milligrams. The Twinject auto-injector contains two doses of epinephrine and we will use skill drills 18.1 for the EpiPen auto-injector and 18.2 to talk about the Twinject auto-injector. Because epinephrine constricts blood vessels, it may cause the patient's blood pressure to rise significantly. Other side effects include an in increased heart rate, anxiety, cardiac rhythm problems, pallor, dizziness, chest pain, headache, nausea, and vomiting. In summary, an allergic reaction is a response to chemicals the body releases to combat certain stimuli called allergens. Allergic reactions occur most often in response to five categories of stimuli, insect bites and stings, medications, food, plants, and chemicals. The reactions may be mild and local, involving itching, redness, and tenderness, or they may be severe and systemic, including shock and respiratory failure. Anaphylaxis is a life-threatening allergic reaction mounted by multiple organ systems. It must be treated with epi. Wheezing and skin wheels can be signs of anaphylaxis. People allergic to bees, hornets, yellow jackets, or wasp venom often carry a kit that contains epi and an auto-injector. 
You may help to administer this medication in this form with authorization from medical control. All patients with suspected anaphylaxis require oxygen. Check patients who may be having an allergic reaction for flushing, itching, and swelling skin, hives, wheezing, and strider, persistent cough, decrease in blood pressure, a weak pulse, dizziness, abdominal cramps, and headache. Always provide prompt transport to the hospital for any patient who is having an allergic reaction. Remember that signs and symptoms can rapidly become more severe. Carefully monitor the patient's vital signs en route and be especially alert for airway compromise. Thanks, and if you have questions, please bring them to class.